Mindy Patterson with the Cavalry Group is going to be headlining a public forum uh, tonight at Rocky Mountain College. Uh, Mindy Patterson now joins us here live in studio. Great to see you, Mindy. Thanks Thanks. for dropping in. Thank you for having me. How do you summarize the attacks on especially animal agriculture here in America right now? Well, the animal rights movement is is deceiving everybody. They masquerade as the savior of animals, like you earlier described. But really what they're doing is hiding behind that false facade and pushing policy and legislation at the local, state, and federal levels behind this facade of we care the most about animals. But what they're doing is injecting policy that puts the squeeze on animal owners and animal-related businesses to the, to the point where they can't even function. Um, you know, these are we're talking legal operations here. People who are law-abiding, licensed, regulated industries, whether animal agriculture or in the pet industry, and the animal rights groups' nefarious intentions is to put them out of business, to make them all go away. So they're incrementally doing this through legislation policy, and, and not only through policy, but they've got a big backer in a lot of the establishment media. I mean, we you know, fake news is a term that everybody's become more recently familiar with. Ah, fake news, and 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 seeing fake news stories, or at least agenda-driven news stories. Well, the fake news has always globbed onto fake news from these animal rights activists and and sensationalized some stories in, in, in the past also. I love what you said in your introduction, talking about the culture, because the animal rights agenda and ideology is really a political agenda that is incrementally altering our culture uh, through our schools, through education, through the media, through legislative uh, efforts, as well as even litigation. Um, Just a bit at a time, chipping away at our American way of life through this deceptive program. Uh, Mindy Patterson with the Cavalry Group. She's uh, actually headlining an address tonight uh, for the Montana Agro Women. Great organization here in the state. In fact, Karen Yost, who's been just one of the great leaders in the Montana Agro Women, both statewide and nationally over the years. You know, she, she was the one who kind of first told me about this this circus angle, you know, them blocking the circus in Missoula and how that could actually have a big impact on agriculture here in the state if they use the same arguments. Mindy, your thoughts? No question about it. Look, if they can ban uh, these legal businesses that are very highly regulated in terms of animal welfare already, and people who own exotic animals for the circus, elephants, tigers, you know, all of these, uh, what would be considered large carnivores for, uh, and other exotic animals for the circus, if they can ban those legal businesses at the local level um, through a deceptive campaign legislatively, then anyone who believes that uh, cattle ranchers, it could never happen to them, or the pet industry, uh, owning a dog, you think again, you know, it's everything is in the crosshairs right now from the pet in your lap to the steak on your plate. We are in a very aggressive uh, fight against animal ownership, animal enterprise and essentially private property. This is an attack on um, the infringements on our on our Constitution. And um, for some, it may seem like that's a, a stretch. But when you really boil down boil it all down. This is an infringement on our right to freely operate legal businesses in the United States. We always see all these, especially with politics, we see these these phony front groups that come up with some name like the Western Values Project. Well, it's <laughs> a bunch of foreign billionaires and left-wing wackos fund this group. And then they get quoted by all the mainstream media outlets mm-hmm. whenever they attack you know, our economy or whatever, or certain uh, members of a political party. But what are some of the groups to keep a watch out, particularly from this from this agriculture standpoint, like Humane Society of the U.S., which is not your local animal shelter? Correct. Uh, the Humane Society of the United States, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, the ASPCA, which is the American Society for the Protection of uh animals, welfare of animals. But they have all those sad kittens and puppies. They look like a really nice organization. Tug at the heartstrings, their emotional agenda. The problem with these organizations is they really do nothing for animals. They, but they bring in a lot of money and they're really about raising money. And that's the scary part because when you really look at the, the money that they raise, that's all they do. But what they do fund is not the care of animals, but they fund lobbyists that are in every state house. They fund legislative campaigns such as ballot initiatives. Um, they're, they're pouring their money into erode um, our ability to 
uh, raise, breed, and work with animals across the U.S., and it's incrementally destroying our country. How could you see them going after uh, farming and ranching, you know, folks who might use horses, obviously cattle, you know? I, I still got family and friends who don't want video cameras there when they're branding because of how that could just be deceptively used by some in the fake news media. Oh, they, they take normal as animal husbandry practices and they vilify them and they make them look like cruel practices when really the animal benefits from a lot of these uh, animal husbandry procedures. Um, castration of cows, tail docking, branding, um, you know, they, they take these things and make them look, they're re- the problem is, is that through a lot of these legislative, deceptive legislative campaigns, these well-funded animal rights groups are redefining what is considered humane. When they themselves and their animal rights ideology are doing nothing but raising money and changing the, the culture view, as you said earlier. It's really scary. This this is what we're up against. And it's a it's a heavy lift because we don't have the emotional photos. You know, if you want an emotional soundbite from me, it would be that people are losing their livelihood. People are losing their ranches. People are losing their way of life. And what that means for the consumers is we may not have the choices of food that we're so, we've become so accustomed to. Well, and I think fundamentally the tie-in with all of these groups, animal rights activists, the environmental activists, fundamentally they don't want us here. They wanna turn Montana into a playground for the rich. They wanna turn it into an American Serengeti. They don't want these communities here. They want us gone and they're gonna use every tool they can do to do it, whether it's animal rights activism or yep. environmental activism. Yep, all these deceptive campaigns. And animal agriculture, uh, it's the backbone of our nation, and it's it's certainly so here in the the state of Montana. We're we're gravely concerned about this on a very broad scale, and all too often, a lot of people will say, "Well, that'll never happen. Oh, this will never affect me." Well, it's happening, and it's and it will affect everyone. So, if you enjoy eating, I suggest that you uh, pay attention to what's going on in local, state, and federal policies that will impact your food producers. All right. Mindy Patterson, president and co-founder of the Cavalry Group. She'll be headlining an event tonight at Rocky Mountain College uh, for Montana Agro Women. And of course, the title of her talk, Animal Rights Versus Animal Welfare. Know the difference in how not knowing can affect you. Mindy, great to have you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much.